What's up everybody in Yu-Gi-Oh! YouTube land, this is Jesse Byrne representing Team FTK and today I'm joined with... Uh, Dalton Johnson. And what did you do this past weekend? I got my first top at YCS Fort Worth with Cyber Dragon Orchest. I was third after Swiss and I ended top 16. And why did you decide to play that deck? So I decided to play Cyber Orchest and then there was like some, some specific cards that I could play that countered what other people were trying to do against the deck because it was going to be a really popular deck. and. I felt like Cyber Dragon Orcus like doesn't care about pure Orcus at all. It doesn't care about Sky Strikers because you just contact their stuff away and then kill them. So, and then, so then what's the goal of your deck? Um, I'll I'll get to like the cards I play. Like I'll show you like the goal as I kind of explain like the choices. Basically, uh, the first turn board is like really broken, and going second, like I said, you just clear you clear their board and then set up your your stuff with like the specific cards I chose. Uh, we're able to go like both ways. Okay, and what were your standings after uh, Swiss? So I was third place after Swiss. And then I played a pure Orcus round one, then Geist. That match was like a shit show. Pure Thunder, Dragon Link FTK. I got FTK'd uh, the second game of that match. And then I played a Draco, pure Orcus, Salmon Great. I lost it to Blessing Wilson. That was my only loss day one, or in Swiss at all. Then I played a Striker, then another Salmon Great. And then the last two rounds of Swiss, I played a Crusadia, Orcus, Thunder, Danger, Guard Dragon. That was crazy. Game three, he like Mystic Mind. It was, it was, it was wild. And then Pure Orcus. And then top 32, I played Pure Orcus, Brian Reos. And then I lost in top 16 to Pure Thunder, and Andres Torres. So uh, awesome. it was a really fun event. And uh, I did not expect to do anywhere other than anything other than like X4 drops. So yeah. I'm really happy with uh, the Sounds weekend. Sounds pretty exciting, dude. Yeah. Uh, well, we appreciate you uh, being here to do the list and everything. Yeah, so definitely. You want to get into it and show what's yeah, playing? So I played one Cyber Dragon. I actually cut Machine Dupe, which uh, was a lot of people were surprised by, but like it is a win button. But the combo with you setting up uh, an Infinity plus Orcus combo happens like 70% of your hands anyway. And I found that Machine Dupe was bricking a lot when I would open like only Dangers and Orcus and like trap cards and stuff. So it was only good if I had a core, like specifically Core or Hers in my hand. And uh, I didn't want to rely too heavily on that card. And then one Naster. This card's kind of a brick. So the, these are both bricks going first, but they're really good going second for just like extending and then just like summoning and contacting. Probably like my favorite part of playing this deck as opposed to like pure Orcus or anything is doing Orcus combo going first without these cards and then turn three like summoning a Cyber Dragon and then they didn't know that that's what you're playing and then that's just super broken. Three core, this card was juice all day. They have to negate this card or they lose no matter what. So this baited out a lot of like impermanences and ashes and stuff like that. Three hers, this one is really good and uh, I enjoy it. Two honorary cyber dragons, this is galaxy soldier is pretty good. Played a couple animals, so danger of Vanessa, danger bunny rabbit, and then one snake. A lot of people played two, but I uh, felt like going first, I didn't want to just throw a bunch of monsters on the field. That's not, that wasn't my goal. My goal was to set up like the minimum amount of cards that I would need to into the Orcus combo, get an infinity if I could, and then set like stun cards and then kill them the next turn. Yeah. Going second, this is really good, but most of the time it just felt like a brick, so I decided to play only one of them. Because you still want to have cards to search or summon off the Jackalope and the Nessie. For Orcists, two Nightmare, two Harp, a Symbol, and a World Wand. I played World Wand over Gizmek pretty much because turn three, you want to keep going into your Orcus stuff, especially if you don't end up with an Infinity. And this just ensures that you're always doing that because you don't always end with these in the graveyard turn three. And then two Harp because it's really good to draw. Two Nightmare because if you draw one and you don't have the other one, you can't combo. And then I played a Scythe. So. Oh, wow. So that's all for the monsters. Spell cards, three emergency. This is one of the other cards that they have to negate or they're pretty much gonna lose. But if the activation gets negated, you just draw a card, put it back in your hand. That didn't happen, but this got ashed a lot, which just secured all my other plays going through. Play to repair plant, you search Galaxy Soldier, or you search Natchester, 
which is probably my favorite monster. One Rev System. And then probably the best card in the main deck all weekend was Called by the Grave. I feel like a lot of people cut this, but it's really good going first against Luna Lights, Pure Orcus, Sky Strike, like everything is just super good. You make sure your combos go through. And going second, I thought this card was really good because with this deck specifically, you contact their board away. You can set up like Orcus combo and Infinity, and then you just set this card after you break their board and they can't come back. <laughs> That's broken. So I just thought this card was super good. Played one Babel, and then the broken one of Foolish and Reborn. Played Reborn mostly because if you get Nibiru and you just have a Reborn, then you're fine. And then I guess the the spice, not really, was Trap Trick for Overflow and Sanctum. What, what does over, Overflow do? So Overflow is searchable by core. You banish Cyber Dragons with different levels from your hand, field, or graveyard, and it non-target pops that many oh, cards. Wow. That's so crazy. you a lot of times you can end with like Orgus combo, Infinity, and this, which is a pop three if you do it with a uh, core and hers and the galaxy soldier stuff. And how good was the artifacts in there? So this was like the reason that I did as well as I did. I did win a lot of die rolls, like not gonna lie, but if you have just Orcus combo and this, there's no way that they can win that game. There's just no way. And then even going second, like I said, if you Cyber Dragon break, like fuse their board away, then set up Orcus combo and then set this and like a called by the grave or one of the, one of the two, then they just don't have a way to come back and then you kill them. That's broken. Last card was Crescendo. So that's it for the main and it was 41 cards. 41, all right. Then we'll do extra. I played one of this guy, played a Mermaid and two Phoenix. Cerberus, uh, you, there's no monsters in the game right now that you can't deal with with your Cyber Dragon cards or Ding or Boral Sword. So I just felt like service wasn't necessary. And then if you go first and you throw your Phoenix away for the Orcus combo, you just have a second one. So cards like there can be only one and stuff like that like just don't really matter because you have a second one anyway. Played a Boral Sword because I like to kill people. And then the Orcus Links. I only have one ulti, unfortunately. One Ding. Played Nova Infinity, because this is the reason that this deck is good. You kept, uh, I keep like sucking up monsters from the extra zone. That's how you play around getting Mega Fleeted, which I only did like a few times after I learned my lesson in the first few rounds. I didn't think people were going to be playing Mega Fleet because the deck was super popular, so people wouldn't play it because it was popular. Uh, but I got outplayed a few times because I just didn't suck up the ding. Then I played two Mega Fleet, Fortress, and Rampage. This is probably the best card in the extra all weekend. This was super powerful. And then this was only for if you get into Beerud, you just summon this off Nova, and then you make the token and this into a Phoenix, and then you work his combo. I didn't get into Beerud. Uh, I think I got into Beerud once, but I didn't have an Infinity or a Nova on the board, so it didn't matter anyway. That is it for the extra. It's 15. So for the side, I decided to play three No Material for Pure Orcus, Lunalite Orcus. I didn't play any Lunalites, which was the main reason that I had this card in because like I said, Cyber Dragon doesn't really care about Pure Orcus. Also didn't play Lancia, so I felt like I did want a card just in case I go second against those decks. Uh, I probably wouldn't keep this in based off the matchups that I played, but it was there for Lunalite, which was like a really scary deck and I wanted a win button versus them. Played two Dino Wrestler for like, this is like the most generic card that you can play. Against Pure, you could just summon this, contact their board away, and then you can pop things and keep it on the board for their follow-up because they're not going to have a ding. And this one made a game against Draco, which I guess it did its job because that was a terrifying matchup. Yeah, it always is. Two Phantasme. I felt like Striker would be super popular. I only played one, but it came in only like once. I only drew it against Pure Orcus, and it drew me three cards when he went uh, Galate along Gear Su, so... It was fine. It drew Super Poly off of that, so it was cool. Three Twin for back row. In my round two, I played against Geist. He had a Marionetter in five set, and I drew Three Twin, so I thought that I was going to win, so I shotgunned a Twin, discarded a Twin, so he didn't know that I had the third one. 
hit a spoofing and then another card. The other card was a protocol, he flipped it, spoofing put it back to search faker and then I activated the third one. And then he had Imperial Lure, so. Yeah. <laughs> I scooped that one up real fast. Then probably the best card, at least the card that I activated the most in the side was Super Poly with the Predaplant and the Fusion. So I needed something against Pure Thunder going second because I didn't play Nibiru or Lancia. And in testing, there's a lot of times where you go second against the Colossus with emergencies and cores and you can't really do anything. You can get rid of one Colossus by just contacting away and then making Orcus combo. But against Colossus Titan or two Colossus, it's just really hard. So I wanted like a win button versus them. A really hard matchup also that I was testing a lot was Pendulums and this just like destroys the pendulum board in addition to like the contact fusing. So I really wanted uh, to make sure that I had the, all those bases covered. This is also good going first, which is another thing that I valued really highly. Like my deck is already really good going first, but I just wanted to have additional things in case that I ran into that problem. So that is the deck. Is it For shout outs, I wanted to shout Edgar and Steven out because I forgot to shout them out on my other profiles, sorry. I want to send a shout out to my girlfriend for putting up with the amount of playtesting and like going to locals and stuff. Uh, finally, like what didn't, it's not for nothing. Shout out to Abraham, Christian, and Strike Zone. And shout out to Ricky Lou and the Card Shack for when I took Magician Girls to my first locals and Ricky Lou taught me how to like play the game. I want to shout out um, my friend Cameron. He was the main person that I tested with for, the, tested with for this event. He was playing Pendulum and setting up nut boards, and I was like, okay. It motivated me to, to play cards that I needed that got me there. Shout out to Julian, Alex, Zach, Flores, and Claiborne for like motivating me and like being there in between rounds or uh, for like motivation and stuff. Shout out to Martinez, Mario, Damon for kind of like being my teammates. And if I have like card choices or tech choices or like ratios that I was thinking about and playing with, they would have advice for me and tell me what their opinions were. And then also my uncle Ryan for trying to teach me how to play magic and Abraham for teaching me to try to play magic, but my Yu-Gi-Oh brain is too small and inferior to handle that. So maybe we'll get there one day. And then shout out to Team FTK. All right. So yeah, this was uh, Jesse Byrne represent Team FTK here with Dalton. Congratulations on your top. Thank you. All right. Out.